Oh, is that a shell? That's his case that he made for himself, his house. Yeah, so he used a piece of his the purpose of this is to have the children understand that anything that they do on the land has a connection to the water. Part of it is just drawing that connection between their, our daily habits and the things that we do as humans and going through our lives and it's the waters all around us. We're finding the temperature and the width of the stream and we're going through the mud to find different kind of, um, well, insects and we're looking through, we have to look really carefully to see them because they're really small. Shell or no shell? Is this the same one? No shell. So we go to the no shell side. Does it have legs or no legs? It does have legs. So we go down to here. Does it have Stonefly nymphs, midges, riffle beetles, and caddis fly larvae are just a few of the creatures that Anthony Clock's fourth graders are learning to identify. A caddis fly is a bug that, built, that tends to build an armor around it so it can sink in so the current won't blow it over. This is a gill snail, because <laughs> its opening is on the right. These types of organisms are classified as benthic macroinvertebrates, tiny water dwellers just large enough to be seen with the naked eye that can be found in New Jersey's waterways. They're learning to identify them so they can find them in the wild. Oh, yeah. This is heavy. Good? Yeah. All right. Okay, so quick glance. What do we got? Today we're going to take the students down to our sh local stream with our net, dig around a little bit in the stream, see if we can get any macroinvertebrates and bugs to look at. We'll bring them back up so they have somewhere to sort through. And then depending on what kind of bugs we find in there, we can tell how healthy the stream is, if there's a lot of pollution. There is a storm drain that runs in that way, so we'll see if that maybe has been affecting it. It's all part of a unit of study on watersheds that combines classroom lessons and hands-on science. A watershed is an area of land that, like, when it rains, the water will go through the land and it'll flow down into, it'll shed off into a bay or stream or river. So if you spill oil, it'll go in and then it'll end up in the stream or rivers. So that's why it's not good to litter and dump oil and stuff. Watershed regions throughout New Jersey supply drinking water, provide recreation, and sustain life, so it's important to protect them. I try to incorporate multidisciplinary aspects into it. So, for example, you know, there's, you may have noticed there's a lot of math involved in this. Obviously, it's all science. You know, I have a, we have a lot of reading that's involved in reading comprehension types of things that are also involved. So, there's a lot of classroom stuff that goes along with this. It's not simply just doing a, uh, a fun activity outside, but there's also a lot of stuff that leads up to it. Just in case. We only get to see a few different kinds of species today. We have some preserved samples of mayflies, the water penny, um, damselflies, and dragonflies. So you guys can pass these around, take a look at them. Um, these are to help get his students water. excited about watersheds, Clock enlisted the aid of AmeriCorps' New Jersey Watershed Ambassadors Program. The AmeriCorps program is funded by the DEP. It's been in play for about 12 years now. And it's a service organization, so we serve a term of 10 months. And we do environmental education, we do different community projects like cleanups, rain barrel workshops with community organizations. We go into schools, we teach them about stormwater runoff and the benthic macroinvertebrates that we'll be doing today. And we just do various things with educating people on water issues in New Jersey. I'm very much of the mind that I don't have to be the font of all knowledge in my classroom. I really like to have other people come in and I like them to hear other people's voices. You know, I know this material, I've been doing it for years and years and years. It's just nice for them to particularly see younger younger people coming in and doing it. That's always a plus. Also, a lot of the watershed ambassadors tend to be females. So it's nice to have the girls see role models of women doing science. That's always a big important thing for me as well. We got this sample from the stream over there, and then first you have to like wait so you can dry it out so you can see it better. With the, and then when you, if you see a, anything moving, you just pick it up with a spoon and hope you have a bug on it. And then you put it in a petri dish. And then we, then we, we, we give it more water so it doesn't uh, it doesn't drown or anything like suffocate. So. Yeah. And then we also use these sheets to identify what um, insects we found. Yeah. Creating excitement for science is just one of Clock's goals. Another is to help his students develop a spirit of environmentalism. It's a passion of mine and I really want them to have a connection to nature because, you know, if, if we have a whole generation of kids who don't 
value nature and don't value the environment. These are the adults who are going to be able to conserve in the future. How will we ever have anything in the future if these kids don't learn to cherish and love this environment?